there are several questions on what really could be the possible reasons of this tragedy. We'll give you a quick look at what went by. Botched up renovation of this 140-year-old bridge. This bridge renovation itself was supposed to take place in a good eight, nine months, but it was cramped up and completed in five months' time. So one can imagine how, uh, what a shoddy job must have been done by this private company or ever. Now, overcrowding on that bridge uh, has resulted in this bridge collapse is what, uh, of course, experts are suggesting at this point, and, and that, that seems like the obvious reason. Uh, why were people allowed to come out in numbers on that bridge? Why, was there no control? Was there no strict checks while tickets were being issued by this private company? Local operators allowed for crowd flouting norms. Now, despite there being strict suggestions and there's, uh, th there are posters all over, you know, signages that says uh, overcrowding not allowed, selfies not allowed, and basically protocols on what to do when you get on that bridge, it appears that there was nobody to monitor these crowds brazenly flouting all those norms. And then this bridge opened up without a proper fitness certificate. Now this, of course, uh, is also the responsibility of the municipal authority there and the government as well. Uh, but they're blaming the private agency of not taking a fitness certificate. But this is a massive bridge, a public property, a tourist spot. How is it possible that no agencies, uh, including the civic agency there in Morbi, uh, came by to check if everything were as per protocols? And as we see, the bridge has already, it was already in a precarious situation. Uh, it, it's a 19th century old bridge, 140 years old, and yet there wasn't enough done to ensure the safety of those people who were getting on that bridge. The first, first of all, it appears that the renovation work itself was extremely shoddy. Now, who is to be blamed? As much as uh, there's, there's one shifting the blame on a private agency, there are several questions being asked on the Gujarat government's role as well. Poor upkeep and maintenance of this British era bridge. Why was the government not, uh, why didn't they take enough responsibility to ensure that this bridge was kept in place? If at all, they plan to allow the public on it. The Oreva Group, quite naturally, this is the company that's also been mentioned in the FIR. This is a private agency that's uh, been given the tender by the government to renovate this bridge and maintain this bridge. Clearly, shoddy renovation work, rushed up re uh, repair work, and they've allowed for overcrowding on that bridge. And that itself seems to be the primary reason of this bridge collapse. And moreover, it appears that this company, Oreva, has sold tickets and that's led to overcrowding. They've sold tickets much beyond capacity. Close to 300 odd people were on that bridge is what is estimated as per our reports on ground. Uh, but that bridge could not hold that capacity. It was much over capacity. And this bridge, as far as we see, was reopened without the civic body's nod. And that's what the civic body claims, shrugging off responsibility. Of course, it's the civic body also to be questioned at this point as to why was there no due checks. It's a public property, a, pl a public place, a tourist attraction. Why was there nobody from the civic authority there present to ensure that it's all safe and under control? Now, clearly we see no safety checks were carried out for this bridge before it was reopened. And that's that, that's primarily the mess here that resulted in a brazen flouting of norms because there were no prior checks by any agency whatsoever. And all of them, uh, it appears, has, have acted against the protocol. So clear violations here on every level.